With Project Catalyst voting open, there are so many proposals to go through and it's really hard to filter down and get rid of all the bad ones so that you can vote on what potentially could really help with the Kadana ecosystem. And in this video, I'm going through two tools that will really help you go through and find those proposals, those really cool gems out there that are building on the Kadana ecosystem and make your life easier in this voting process. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm Peter Bury, and if this is your first time here, please consider giving me that thumbs up, click subscribe, click the notification bell on your way in as we talk about Project Catalyst. Now, for those that don't know, Project Catalyst is Cardano's funding mechanism. It has its own treasury and it gets bigger and bigger every year. So all these really cool startup projects that are considering building something in the Cardano ecosystem can get the funding from Project Catalyst simply by putting a proposal up to the community and then letting the community vote on those proposals and potentially getting funded. And I absolutely love this model. And this is one of the things that drew me deep into the Cardano ecosystem. Absolutely love it. Check out episode three of the audio podcast if you want to learn more about Project Catalyst. But let's have a look at these tools. This one here, this is the first one that we'll look at and it's called the Catalyst Voter Tool. I'll put the links to it down below. It has one of those funny abbreviated abbreviated uh, domain names, Cardano Catalyst, Catalyst with the dot at before the ST at the end. Very clever. But this voter tool has all of the proposals pulled in from Ideascale. Ideascale is the original site where all the Catalyst proposals reside, where all the proposal submitters put all their ideas in. But this pulls them all out, aggregates all that information and makes it so much faster. Ideascale is painful to go through to read and this makes it so much easier. So this one here, this one's by Flantoshi. It's quite a popular proposal. That's uh, educational content in human terms, breaking down all those technical things. So we're not talking about the abbreviations of things, POS or DAOs or whatever it is. So it will, they're taking out all those technical terms to make it as easy as possible. Now let's have a look at the proposal and how um, the site here breaks them down to make it easier for you guys. So it has the problem statement here the solution and the relevant experience in regards to being able to deliver the project. And in this process, advisors, the proposal assessors, I should say, go through and review the proposals and see how feasible it is to be delivered, its impact and auditability. Now, these three factors, the impact, does it meet the challenge that it's in? So the great migration from Ethereum, does it have the impact and does it meet the challenge requirements? Feasibility, is it doable? Is the budget in the right spot? So that's what the assessors uh, look at for that point of view. And auditability, can the project be delivered and can we check that it has been delivered? Or is it a pie in the sky thing that will be delivered in um, 10 months time and it's too hard to measure? So we're looking at those things. It's basically bang for buck. If it's got a high audibility, um, if it has a high audibility rating, it means that we can potentially know uh, how much and how the money is being spent. So they're all really important factors to have a look at. And the higher this assessment rating is, the better. Now, proposal advisors and veteran proposal advisors play a key role in any of the uh, particular catalyst proposals that go through the ecosystem. So if you're looking at any of this stuff, please make sure that you're at least filtering out anything below a four star rating. I, I personally don't believe that anything at three or below um, would um, warrant um, uh, funding. Uh, so please have a look at that. That is my opinion. That's uh, one of the filters that I do put in. It has to be a four and up. Some have a five-star rating. I do have an interview with a particular person that has a five-star rating and um, we can go through that and get a better understanding of what the really good proposals are. So the next bit here is the funding itself. Now, this amount of funding is very low for the entire challenge setting. So if we just go back one, we can have a look at how much funding is in the entire challenge. And it's half a million US dollars in terms of funds. And we go back here, we can see they're only asking for 6,650 to get this done. And that is a very low amount. It is 1.33% of the entire challenge. 
So that means it's probably highly likely that this particular proposal will get through because of that small amount of funding. Now, there are some projects that ask for a huge amount of funding. And as a part of that, they would suck up a lot of those funds if they get voted through. Now, with those ones, it means anyone else after that got a little bit less in terms of voting may not get funded. So if, for example, let, let, let's just go to... Uh, I, I don't want to highlight this as a bad example, but um, it's it's just what's um, been going on here. So this one here, let me just find it. Okay, so this one here, this is the one from M Labs. It's um, uh, changing the way that the Blockfrost API works to make it faster and better. So instead of using uh, how they're doing it at the moment, they're going to use the Cardano transaction library and build up the Blockfrost backend to be highly scalable and highly available. Now, this got a high uh, rating uh, within the ecosystem. But if you have a look here, the requested funds is 50,000. Now, I don't Doubt. I know that it does require a lot of engineering, a lot of time and development to actually do this. And 50,000 is probably nowhere near enough in regards to the amount of funds uh, required. But they went for 50,000. Now, if they got through in this particular challenge, it would mean that any other project under it wouldn't be able to get the funding for this particular um, challenge. Uh, and they'll be the only one that gets through. So in regards to looking at the projects and voting on something like this it's it's really good that you or important that you have a look at how much of the requested funds they're asking for and what kind of impact that will have on the rest of the challenge that they're submitting in so some of these other projects the small ones may have a really big impact as well like really really big, big impact and they just need that initial seed funding to get started so my view around the funding side of things is kind of more so for the smaller projects in the ecosystem. So the type of projects that don't have large profits already, that don't have treasuries or a DAO, or haven't launched a token on a DEX and have the liquidity there that they can tap into. So it's better, I believe, it's better for the projects that don't have access to all that VC funding or whatever it is. So. My point of view is to vote for the really cool projects that have really high impact, high value, but then don't have that ex access to the, the deep liquidity, deep funds within the ecosystem. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, again, they're my opinions. Please don't, um, uh, if you disagree with them, totally cool. If you think uh, a, a proposal that's asking for a million should be get funded, go ahead and vote for it as well. It's um, free, free. You can vote however you want. Now, the last thing I want to go through is the actual uh, reviews by the uh, particular assessors. So if we have a look at this one here, uh, let me just filter this by um, by view, by rating. So let's go high score, ascending, no, descending. And this one's got a nice five-star review. Uh, Cardano Youth Ambassadors. And they've got, um, all right, let's have a look at this one. So they're asking for a good amount of the funds, so just 10%. They've got that lovely five-star rating and review from all of the assessors. And then they actually have the reports from the assessors as well. So if you're doubting the review, you can actually go through and read what the assessors have said. You can go th through it and see, okay, how does this particular challenge, how does this proposal meet the challenge? Great. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, how likely would be implemented? Here's the explanation here and their reasoning and logic why. And then how would it be audited and how would the project deliver? So how can we measure that as well? So it has all that there and we can see that it's actually done by, um, by a group of five veteran proposal assessors. So it's, it's a really good high level rating and review from people that have been in the ecosystem for a long time. So this this is where that uh, trust factor comes in to try and get uh, better reviews from the ecosystem. So they're the things that I'll be looking at to ensure that you have a really good base for what you're voting on. Now, this is another really cool website, and this is by Lido Nation. And his, he, his team, I, I don't know if it's more than one person, have taken the Voter Catalyst Voter Tool to a whole new level and have made it really immersive, made the search really cool as well. And you can go through this and find all sorts of proposals all in the different challenges. And really cool thing, he's included all of the videos from IdeaFest, 
where um, proposers proposers needed to do a quick three minute video and you can go through all the videos now. They're all here in the quick pictures and you can have a look at them and get a really quick overview of each one of them and see which ones you really like. Give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down, whatever it is. And it works within the website and gives you those really cool overview videos there. So I'll be going through, I'll be uh, giving a thumbs up, thumbs down to try and um, uh, give give everyone else a little bit of an idea of uh, how all these proposal, proposals are going in there. So absolutely love this website, really immersive, really a rich mix of media because I sometimes get bored and tired of reading. So the videos in there, absolutely fantastic. Now you can also filter by small projects or proposals by women, large projects, first timers. So we can go in small projects down here, less than 10K budgets, and you can find which ones are those really small ones, but with really high ratings that could potentially have a lot of impact. So I absolutely love this website. It also has the little bookmarks here so you can bookmark which ones you really, really like. So tutorial on building wallet, I think that's great. Give that a little bookmark and we'll add it to your bookmarks in the top there and you can go back, review that. So when you're voting on your mobile phone in the app, actual voting app itself, you can say, okay, that's fantastic. These are all the ones that I looked at and I can do my voting based on the bookmarks I have. Absolutely fantastic. Now back to the very first website, this one here also had my had um, the add to my upvote pick list and downvote pick list as well. So it does have that feature in there too. So depending on how you wanna view and uh, browse through the different proposals, you have your different options there. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was DREPs or the Delegate Representatives. This is a new initiative that is going through the whole Catalyst system as well, where people that have no idea what they're voting on can delegate their vote to someone. Someone that is deep in the ecosystem, understands what's going on, can understand all the technical jargon within all these documents, maybe it's read a couple of white papers, etc. And then you as a user that's got no idea but want to support the Kadana ecosystem can say, this person here can do the voting for me and then they can represent you based on the uh, engagement feedback that they have received from you and vote on your behalf which is absolutely fantastic. It's a very similar way to how uh, most uh, Western parliaments work, where you have a local representative in your area and then you vote for them and then they vote on your behalf in parliament to pass laws and everything else around it. So very similar model to that. And hopefully this comes out and matures a little bit more over time so that uh, the D reps can have a bit more of a play and we'll see more and more people voting in the Cardano ecosystem as well. Now, if you wanna learn more, if you wanna get some more information, all the links are down below for you so you can find these tools or these articles. You can also find it on our website at learncardano.io. All the links will be there in a dedicated page all around Project Catalyst. There is also an audio episode. It's a little bit old now. It's in my old style of how I did things back then but episode number three of the Learn Kadana podcast you can listen to it anywhere where you listen to your favorite pods all right that's it for me for this episode if you really enjoyed it like subscribe notification bell and you'll see me in the next video yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.